Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, we're going to talk about expat life in a Philippine province. We're going to talk about the advantages, disadvantages. I'm going to cover many different topics. Uh, water, food, cell internet, uh, medical, transportation, immigration issues, uh, security, banking. And we'll try to touch on uh, many of those issues as we go through this. Cost of living is, is a major factor people choose to live in the province. Technically, everything is in a province in the Philippines. Uh, but the term province often refers to something outside of the bigger city anyway. Because people tell me, sir, find a province girl. And they mean somebody outside of the big city because they have different values than uh, the girls who have been in the big city for a while is what they tell me. First, cost of living, and uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I've got over a thousand videos that I've been doing since 2015. I uh, do a lot of uh, cost of living videos, um, condo videos, real estate related videos. Uh, what, is a, what, do you, what do you get in a condo? Um, how, what do they cost to rent? What do they cost to buy? Lots of different developments. Um, real estate agents would grab me in the malls and say come and look at my condo I always had a camera with me and I started putting those videos up uh, so a lot of a lot of many many uh, videos of condominiums some housing developments uh, here and a number of other cities um, so check those out as well a lot of travel videos and if be so kind uh, subscribe give me a thumbs up or thumbs down whatever it all helps to uh, promote the channel as well Cost of living in the province, generally, as a rule of thumb, is less than is in the big city, but it really depends upon uh, how you handle your money. You are in charge of your money. Generally, your rents are going to be lower. Um, there again, location, location, location. If you're, if you're living in a high, very high tourist area, in a um, high demand area, now here we have a mall, and I have this, this is a video I, I took in Mool Bowl. And you, I think you've got two malls in town. So even a lot of the medium-sized towns have, have malls. So you have that option uh, with grocery stores and gadget stores, clothing stores, uh, hardware stores. Uh, they will have a lumber store, some kind of building supply store. Uh, but anyway, generally the cost of living uh, is lower. Uh, food. Uh, as well it might be lower oftentimes depending upon exact lo location that you are at your electricity could be lower or it could be higher I went to Komotas Island a number of years ago that island uh, I think it's still they get their power from diesel generators on the island and uh, guy guy was telling me oh, it's, it, it, uh, you'll save so much on rent move over here but then he told me, yeah, your electric bill might be higher than your, than your rent. So that was an issue. Say, say if you're going to rent a place for 5,000 pesos, 100 US dollars about, um, you might get a bill for more than 5,000 for your electric. There again, are you running fans? Are you running your air con 24 hours a day? It's up to you. Water and food obviously are very important considerations. Uh, a lot of the Philippines, it's uh, it's too much water or not enough water. There are areas we had a drought here in 2015 when I first came, and in 2019, not so long ago, and uh, there were shallow wells that went dry. There were uh, places even on both. We were traveling Bohol Island. There was a resort we were going to stay at, and they didn't have any water. They had a they had a pail of uh, salt water from the, from the sea to flush the toilet with, uh, so that wasn't going to work. Even here in Cebu City, um, there were a lot of shallow wells that went dry. There were parts of the city, different village areas, that the people had to get up early in the morning to go down to try to meet a water truck. You got a rice field there. Um, and that water truck may show up or may not go down there with your bucket. And sometimes the taxi drivers told me, yeah, the, the water truck never showed up. Even here, the con uh, big condo I live in in the uptown area of Cebu City, um, the uh, 
Metropolitan Water District, whatever it's called here, uh, was unable to supply us with water uh, after Typhoon o Odette uh, for for some time, uh, I don't know a month or so, and we had to sh we had to hire uh, two trucking companies, I think, that were hauling tanker loads of uh, water and pumping it up to our roof tanks. Uh, so you just never know things you need to check out. Some places they're drilling more deep wells and they're also planting some salt desalination plants, in certain areas, things to check out. As far as food, uh, there again, I know people on other islands that they will come into the big city. They'll Once a month, they'll come over to Cebu City from other islands to shop at the, the bigger grocery stores uh, because of the options. And uh, that is, uh, you can get cheaper food oftentimes in the provinces and uh, they all have these like this is a public market they've got uh, they've got fresh meat vegetables uh, fruits all that sort of thing um, I think it was on Komotes the guy told me if you want beef they they process one cow I think Sunday very very early morning and you better get down there early if you want any beef because there won't be any the rest of the week I do like the convenience of uh, Cebu City, the big cities. Uh, you've got stores like SNR, which is like a Costco in much of the world, uh, and Landers here. Metro and others have some foreign foods as well. Cell phone, electric, uh, and internet service. Uh, I know a guy that uh, moved into an area and found out there was no internet service in the area. He had to wait, I think, a couple months, pay uh, quite a bit extra to have a line run into that area. Uh, so you want to check those things out. I know a lot of guys, they end up, they, they've contacted a girl. And maybe the girls have contacted a guy and they're going to go visit that province. And uh, that's where they will end up living because uh, they, they set up that, that long-term relationship long ago. And uh, they meet the family and move in there. But those are things to check out how rel reliable the uh, now I don't get here in Cebu City I've lived in six different condominiums uh, it's rare that I get a power outage what they call a brownout uh, what we call a blackout back in the USA uh, no electric and when I do it's usually only off for an hour or less um, a few of the condominiums I live in had backup generators. Uh, some of those generators only handled the only handled the common areas, maybe an elevator and the lights in the hallways, and and not the units themselves. Others handled even the units. So I had aircon even then and uh, and internet. Now this is a changing thing. It's evolving with. Uh, we've got a third internet. Uh, we've got a third cellular company internet. Uh, we've got Globe and Smart, PLDT, um, and a, a new one just came on, and I've, uh, I've got one of their plans. The new one is called, the new cell company is called DITO, D-I-T-O, and they've expanded it. It's, uh, I haven't done a lot of testing with it. I have it on a tablet, and uh, it seems to do what I need anyway. And then if you, want, uh, if you want cable television, there are a number of different companies in different areas uh, that, you can, that you can get. Uh, I have Sky Cable for my internet now, and uh, not really happy. It's, it was off for several months uh, after Typhoon Odette in December. Came on for a week or so, and it's been off for about three weeks again. Um, PLDT, as much as I would complain about them, they were much more reliable. And, but as far as speed, you get what you pay for. They've got various plans, and you pay for a higher speed plan. And uh, be, be careful on, on some of these plans, uh, like I think, uh, uh, well, one of them, I'm not going to name them. Um, in big print, they said uh, they, they give a high number for a speed, and then in the smaller print, it says... Uh, average speed and uh, so that is only when no you know when very few people are using it the higher speed perhaps 
for those of you living out in the province, really looking forward uh, to some feedback, what your experiences are as far as connectivity to internet and cellular service. Um, if you live in uh, more populated areas, I would guess you have better service than if you live up in the mountains. And I know some guys that had been in the mountains and they would have to go, they would have to walk and down by the sea to get, to get a signal. But it is evolving. There are apps you can put on your phone that, uh, or on your, your tablet or laptop that uh, show real uh, people who sign up for this app, and if you give them permission, they show actual coverage uh, related to the various users. So you might check, uh, I, I, I don't remember the name of the apps right now. But back to elect electricity and, and uh, brownouts, uh, I have heard from a number of people at Dumaguete, which is a very popular place uh, for expats to retire and tourism down that way, that they have frequent uh, brownouts, electricity going out for, uh, for many hours at a time. So then what do you do? You go into the mall, uh, if they got a backup generator, you go to the sea, try to find some other place where it's a little cooler. I would definitely get backup batteries, a solar system, uh, perhaps probably a generator if I lived uh, out in the country, the province. Medical and transportation, um, tie those together because if you need to get to a hospital in the big city, because many of the, uh, many of the hospitals, they've got hospitals in, in many of these smaller towns and clinics, but uh, if it's anything serious, uh, they're going to, uh, you're going to need to get four people on a motorbike there. You're going to need to get to the big city. So transportation, um, some places have, uh, are you going to be near an airport if you need to go? And do they have regular flights? A lot of the flights out of, uh, out of some cities for, for to get to Cebu, for instance, they go to Manila and then to Cebu like out of Dumaguete, I think. There are, there's, there's a couple of direct flights, I think, in a week. Um, you got ferries, you know, we've got a lot of islands. Ferry service, uh, depends on how critical your situation is. Um, you've got taxis, of course. Taxis, jeepneys, tricycles, uh, depends on the area. Even Dumaguete City, very popular expat destination. I don't think uh, they have taxis there. They've got jeepneys, tricycles, hobble hobble, motorbike taxis. Uh, they do have an airport outside the city. And you've got buses and or vans, and that's evolving too. Uh, various, uh, various areas that, that had bus service now have predominantly van, what they can like 12 to 15 person vans uh, run out of those areas. This trip, I'm actually going to look at some land outside of uh, Mole Bowl, up, up in the mountain. A ways, great view up there. No, I'm not planning on buying property, but I am interested in property and prices. Uh, so uh, I found some people that uh, knew of some property for sale. This guy, in fact, our motorbike driver's uh, mother owns the title, clear title apparently. and. Uh, Anyway, I'm gonna switch over to another video. We have arrived and uh, another video I'll show this, this cow up here, very, very friendly. Most animals you want to stay away from, dogs and cats and any animals, they're not friendly, but this cow was in fact friendly. Busay. Are you friendly? Huh? Friendly? Huh? She was friendly, as you will see, but uh, she was not ready to give any milk. And I did try. I grew up on a farm. I know how to milk a cow, although it's not an easy task if you've never done it before. And uh, even my partner said, no, it, she's too young. She's too young. She's not uh, ready to give any milk. Anyway, immigration and... Immigration government services, um, once you get out of the, the, the there, there's many immigration uh, offices around the Philippines, but many of them are not full service. They can handle uh, small issues. Um, 
and I can't give you a list because I don't know all the, the various uh, the various details of each and every level of office. But uh, you may have to go to the bigger city to get some things done. I know people. I think even from Dumaguete, which is there again, they've got they've got uh, many many uh, expats there. You need to come to, they need to come to Cebu City or some Manila, some other larger city, perhaps Iloilo or Bacolod City, perhaps, uh, to get certain things done. Uh, so you have that. Now you might uh, look forward to a trip like that anyway. Um, uh, what you can do, you can use a service. There are visa services, many visa services. Uh, give a plug to my friend, JR at JRC. Visa Consultancy and Immigration Services. They've got offices in huh? in Cebu City, in Mandawi City, uh, Dumaguete, Mool Bol. Let's see. Um, I think they're setting one up in Boracay. I think they got an office in Boracay now. Uh, they're looking at. Um, I think they've got two agents. I'm not sure if they've acquired an office yet, but they've got two agents. Uh, up in Manila that can handle issues. I will put contact information in the description of this video if you want to contact them. Language. This might be one of the uh, most important issues in deciding where, where to live. What I've found in my travels is that uh, there are some areas you find uh, you find people understand and speak very good English, even in Cebu City. Uh, but I've had a couple people uh, recently that, it, my first taxi driver in Cebu City had, an, had, had uh, very little English. And they come from, uh, from different uh, parts of the province, they come from different islands, they, they may not speak the local language, even Visaya, they might, may come from Iloilo, different language, they may have come from Manila, uh, where they speak uh, more Tagalog now. Filipino is the official language. Filipino, many people call it Tagalog. Filipino language is, is a big, made up largely of Tagalog, but also uh, words from many other uh, languages in the, in the Philippines, trying to be inclusive is what I understand. Uh, but many people call that Tagalog. And English is the second official language, and, and uh, most of your official documents are in English, I believe. So that makes it easier. But I have found, uh, like over on Bohol, rented a motorbike for seven days, went around the island, and as we got into certain areas, the people, although they, they may have understood a English, they were not comfortable trying to respond. Uh, I've even gotten that where I stop at construction sites and try to talk to somebody, find out what they're doing, and uh, they just kind of look at me, they're not sure not sure how to respond. They they don't use English on a regular basis. I've had many Filipinos tell me that they're not comfortable with Filipino, and uh, I've had well, that's a what what does this say? What what do these words say on this sign? Well, that's very deep, sir. It's because they don't they don't use Filipino. They they learn it in school, but they speak their local language in uh, Cebuano, Bisaya. Uh, I think is one of the largest, if not the largest, language group in the Philippines. Mm. You got Ilongo and 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 uh, I think actually over 200 la languages. Um, my girlfriend grew up until she was 18 on Bohol, so Bolahano, something like that, is is very similar to Cebuano, but a little different accent, just like you get in various countries and you have different accents, same same language, but different accents, maybe different slang words. Now these electronic translators are getting better and better, uh, but I haven't found any that have uh, a Filipino in it yet. Uh, so that would be uh, that would be great if they had that, but you speak into the speak into the little little device and it will translate uh, to another language. 
Safety and security. Uh, I'm really looking forward to input from those living in the, in the province, those th uh, thinking about considering all these factors as well. Um, something considered, uh, certain parts of the Philippines are much safer than others, or there, there are some places more risky than others. Um, not just because of NPA and uh, Islamic uh, terrorism, certain places, uh, various islands, uh, but risk factors like landslides. We've had uh, Leyte had a number of landslides because of uh, a lot of rain here uh, the past few weeks. I think they have probably over 200 people uh, dead. Landslide came down, wiped out a village. Um, so flooding, flooding, earthquake risk. There are some areas more susceptible to earthquakes. Uh, because of the, the sun's energy, what it's been doing, um, I got an alert uh, several days ago. Uh, earthquake uh, risk was it uh, elevated, and in fact, here in the Philippines, we've had, I think in the last week or two, I, I know of, I think four, four or five in the between five and six uh, range. Uh, so those uh, those type of factors, um, and this is the property up here on top. 400 square meters, I believe, a huge area all the way back, pretty much all this cleared area, I think. Uh, person would have to get some geological testing uh, if, if you're going to put a development in there. Uh, I think there's three different access points. Uh, pretty close access to water and electric that would be relatively easy to, to run into this area is what I was told. Great view up here of the Cebu Mountains as well as the sea. You can, you've got the sea over there. Great views, nice breeze up there. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hopefully soon we can all travel freely once again just like the good old days. Take care.